<laughs> All right, I'm playing the theme song. Whoops, that's not it. There you go. That's not it. There it is. This is the theme song. Is it too loud? No, it's perfect. You promise? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first storage that I've done in months. And guess what? We have a special guest here. Oh, my God. The lines behind you are making me crazy because they're going like. Whoop. What I usually do to my guest to their discomfort is have them introduce themselves. Oh, nice. <laughs> so the way that I've actually been practicing this. So I'm a, my name's Eric Chandler and I'm a, uh, an actor slash filmmaker is what I will say. That's all you want to say about that's yourself? That's all I got. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Can you scoot that a little bit closer to you? Yeah. Cause I'm a fucking loud mouth. No, that's fine. I'm actually going to get comfortable. Eric Chandler. Um, we met in St. Louis through Tina, I believe, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And he wanted me to do, um, a project, a project with him. Which was called Calm. Oh yeah, the long he has oh, the longest shit. titles in the world. Yeah, I do. Calm me down. I've been so uptight. Which actually that one is the name. Independent filmmaker Mark Duplass and Jay Duplass. You know them? Nope. Nope. Anyway, they. Uh, that's why the character's name is Mark because I would. I don't know. Basically, he was in a, a band called um, Volcano. I'm so excited, and one of the lyrics was. What I thought, calm me down, I've been so uptight. But, That's what it comes from? Yeah. And then, come to find out, it's actually cool me down, I've been so uptight. Because in my weird, you know, drunken brain at the time, I thought that maybe if I name the character Mark, and then I also take a lyric from his song, this will magically go to him, and he'll see it and be like, oh, this guy gets it. He's a fan. Maybe he should work with me. Did that ever happen? No. No, it doesn't. Things that you rarely ever happen the way that you think they're going to happen. But then in some weird way, they kind of work out. You know what I mean? Well, you can check this out on YouTube. And it's, I would say, in the top three scenes I've ever done. Oh, really? Any any film. It's one of my favorite scenes to watch. Mine too. Even. It's Mine too. so funny. Everybody loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone's like... And it was, it's so funny because I don't know, like when I was writing it, I was thinking, all I was imagining was like, you know, the prototypical like uh, housewife or what you see like in TVs or like the voluptuous, like, you know what I mean? Like perfect, the perfect, like, uh, there you go, whatever, perfect, whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it would be, it's even more funny if like Libby comes in and adds her little twist to everything. And it just, I don't know. I it was a lot of it improv. I can't remember. We I know had, you wanted like, some beats that you wanted to hit. So we had, so like when I write stuff, it's like, it'll be, if you're a trained actor or whatever, then I'd say, hey, here are the words. You're good at what you do. Make these sound believable. But if you're like just a, you know, a stand-up comedian, you have charisma, you're funny. I'm like, hey, you're, you perform for a living. Here's what I think, but your brain is probably can add to this. So we did have our beats. And here's a general like sense of what the scene is, but we just kind of went with it. And then as we're doing takes, we're kind of like figuring it out. <laughs> the, the, the funny, the board of the best so scene, it, it was just amazing because everybody was hung over that next day because it was like St. Patrick's Day or it was, no, Cinco de Mayo the night before. So like you were like, yeah, it was Cinco de Mayo yesterday. I don't know if you were hung over or not. I don't know. Probably not because I don't not. really drink. Okay, so. well then maybe it was just us. And uh, my little brother was there. <laughs> and he was uh, he was slating, and he kept saying that he was the master slater, and just he's just a dumbass like that. So like, uh, and then I remember he farted one time in between a take, and then I was like, "What the fuck, Matt?" I probably <laughs> loved every second of it. And then you go, "Okay, did somebody fart?" And you said that <laughs> afterwards, and I was just getting to know you a little bit, and I was like trying. I don't know. It was a it was a good uh, it was a fun day though. We hadn't met up until that point, had we? I think it was we maybe had met. I don't know. Probably not. I don't think so. I think that was the first time. And it's very intimidating to go into a set, especially of all dudes. Yeah, I know. And do that kind of thing. I know. And and the 
the part that jacks me up when I'm filming something is I'm not getting an immediate reaction. Yeah. So I don't know if what I'm doing is good or funny. Oh, no. But then afterwards, everybody's laughing. Yeah. So. You know, I uh, that's one of the main reasons why making films and doing this stuff is really hard because you get absolutely zero gratification out of any of it. Like you re- and then even and then you make something. I tell people like you want to see how like how how many how many people like don't think about you like say you think people are thinking about you all the time I'm like make a short film put it on YouTube and they'll, they'll you'll get 14 views and you'll realize like that's how many people give a shit about what you're like what you're doing and it's not a right. bad thing you know but like with the acting thing somebody told me a long time ago like hey if no one's really if the director's not talking to you then that means you're doing something right but I, oh that's good yeah but me like I went and did something and I'm like in the same shoes, I'm just like, still like, well, fuck, I don't want to ruin your movie. And they're like, dude, relax. And I'm like, oh, I'm being a tough person to work with. You're a great actor. I try to be. I really like, listen, I like to listen. And a great director, too. I don't even know how to do either. I know how to do acting, but the directing thing is like, (laughs) I'm more of just like, hey, here's this thing, and let's get people together, and then like, try to have like a, try to have as, as much fun as we possibly can, but also, like, we've got to get the work done. You know what I mean? So it's always, like, usually you have, like, an assistant director that will say, hey, we got to go, we got to go. But me, I, I can't find anybody, hence why I have dudes all around me all the time. Because, like, <laughs> girls are like, I don't want to work with – and so it's just a very – I'm in a very – there's a very gray area right now. It's just a tough thing. What uh, – so – and I'm probably going to be jumping around because that's how my brain is working. Me too. When did you come to Nashville? So I came here 10 months ago. And what was your thought process? Well, my I got my I got uh, broken up with, right? Oh, oh dude! I didn't oh my know. god! In a storage shed, which I thought was called Chubby Holes, but turns out it's called Cubby Holes. I I drove in. And I thought it was hilarious, but anyway. Well, I give everyone. I, I used to give people the address, and it it takes it to the other place. But if you search Cubby Holes, it brings up a couple of gay. Yeah. Bear bars. Yeah, so holes. that's why I just meet people at the gas station now. It makes sense. Because I, if you go to a, a, a gay bear bar, that's fine. But if you're supposed to be here and you're at a gay bar, that's not okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm Come here for here. this uh, podcast. They're like, oh, yeah. I bet you are. Yeah. And then We're, you stay there. He discovered that we are in a storage unit. And yeah. it, it's always funny to me because um, I don't know if people think I'm trying to trick them or what, but. This is a legitimate storage unit. But uh, me, like, this is one reason why I love comedians. And I will say this right now. Like, comedians are the hardest workers. They're the most innovative. You need to follow what comedians are doing because they're doing it first. And when I walk in here, I'm like, what a brilliant idea. Instead of being like, Aww. instead of being like, well, I got a $900, like, uh, rent that I have to pay on my podcast studio. You're like, let's be smart about this and pay whatever it is. Two twenty nine. Two twenty nine a month and figure it out. Because, and I've also got stuff in here, so it's dual purpose. And you yeah, exa- you do. There's your little storage <laughs> quarter. <laughs> so it's not just for the podcast. But uh it's that's what I love about it. I think like you were like, Why do you keep looking around? I'm like, because this is exactly what Anybody that wants to be a podcaster or a filmmaker or an actor, or whatever it is, like, don't put the cart before the horse. Just do it. Right. And then maybe one day you'll get bigger. And be, you know what I mean? Like, right. that's, you know. You just have to. That's what I'm learning. You just have to start doing it. You have to. And no amount of, like, money is going to help. Like, for instance, today I'm using a camera that is actually a phone. You don't need, you don't need all this big stuff to do stuff. No. I mean, and then that's the... uh Unless you're making stuff like you do, then you do need the fancy stuff. I would stuff. love to, like, not. And, I, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot about, like, what you need, what you don't need. And I've gotten, you know, but, of course, everybody who has their own expertise, you know, they're like, well, this is the most important. This is important. This is important. And I'm like, well, actually, we just have to. It's all very important. We're all cogs in this whole, you know machine or wheel or whatever it is but it's like and a cog is one of those things i have no idea what a cog is i think it sounded I just heard cool it's, yeah, it did yeah but we're it's just some, a cog we're just a cog you know but it's a uh it's something to where sometimes i'll be like yeah we could film this on a potato but as long as it sounds good and the story works we're fine and then the dp will be like you're an asshole and i'm like i'm just joking i'm just joking and, and when i hear dp guess what i think of i know they need to change it they do they should they should change it well because yeah I don't know. 
director of photography. Yep. I would love to be more involved in films. Man, I, 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 th- there's a couple people I think about every time I go into writing, and it's always me. Well, one, you're one. You're one of them. And, but it's always like you can only, you can't expect anybody to stop doing what they're doing and stop their life for what, like, you know, what I have. And, like, I get so, like, obsessed over, like, this idea and obsessed over something to where I'm like, if it doesn't work, if it's not exactly how it is in my brain, then I've got to move on to something different. I've gotten better at changing and, like, adapting. But, like, yeah, I mean, I have, like, I have a very, very fun idea that I would love to do. And, like, there's only, like, you'd probably be the only person I would want to do it with. Yeah. That's me. You want to know why? Why? You're very funny. You're very nice. You're very professional. You show up. You've given me time. You've, there's so I, many. There's I'm so, sorry I'm laughing. There's so many things that you've done to where I'm like, I don't know. Just that they, they go, they, they, they just mean a lot to people. You know what I mean? Like you didn't have to come show up, but you know what? I felt like maybe you got something out of it. I got something out of it. So it was like, it's just kind of how I feel like this entertainment world should work, but sometimes it's different. Well, the last time we worked together, and I can never remember the names of anything, but I played a librarian. Yeah. Which I loved. Yeah, that was fun. And um, I got to work with, oh God, I'm terrible. I can't Rebecca remember. Rebecca Jaffe. Oh, my God. She is brilliant. Fucking hilarious. St. Louis can comedian. And oh, you can say whatever okay. you want. Well, you can't say racist stuff. Yeah, you're right. Um, Rebecca, oh, my God. She's an incredible St. Louis comedian who plays a ukulele and. The two times I've seen her, she's fucking blown me away. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, she's gonna. When I saw her, like I saw her, we had. Sorry, Megan Tolley was in it too. She's another St. Louis comedian as well. We'll get to. We'll, anyway, wait, remind me to get back to that. But I'll forget. Rebecca is. Uh, yeah, she's hilarious, and that scene. Yeah, that scene worked very well, and I remember do, shooting it. It was probably the most stressful day that we had because we were also figuring out like how we, how we work together as a crew type deal. Cause we only had, it was myself and mainly two other guys that were like helping me throughout this whole thing. And we had gotten the library, but, uh, a real library. Yeah. It was the, uh, same library, like not the same one, but the Jefferson County library that I wanted to use because that was a library I would go to when I was a kid and like just rent DVDs all the, or VHSs all the time. And then like my nice. parents thought I was reading and I'm like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I'd be like, I'm sick. Take me to the library because they were free. You could even get CDs there back in the day. You could get CDs, yeah. But, like, I, you know, they didn't have anything I liked. I remember trying. They had CDs, and you could then take them home and make a copy of them. Oh, yeah, you could burn them. You could burn them. I just said that on um, this podcast. We'll probably be approached by the FBI for piracy. Yeah, that could happen. They'll wow. shut this Awkward. whole operation down. <laughs> They'll come in here and be like, this has got to be a cover for something, yeah. a drug front something. And I don't think that the people that I have that are in charge of the cubby holes <laughs> storage know what I'm doing. And I think they'd be okay because as you can see out there, there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah, I mean, you're probably the least of uh, their worries. Right. This guy didn't even put his stuff in his unit. He just <laughs> leaves it outside. <laughs> He's got a whole kitchen out there. There's a lot of stuff Tina uh, told me what the names of all those things over there, and she's like, "Those are very expensive." That's all restaurant that, that's equipment. Very expensive stuff. Like, I mean, uh, but a, a person that knows what they're doing would come would come over here and buy it for super cheap, and then put it in their. You know, I've no like that's the their kind restaurant. Of, yeah, this is the kind of shit that like I grew up around was shit like this. And then when I was driving out here, I'm like, oh man, I got like because you remember the the library is kind of like. You drive pretty mm-hmm. far to get there. Yeah. And that's what this area reminds me of is like how where I grew up. You're a Jefferson County kid? Jefferson County kid, yeah. That's interesting. I spent a lot of time in Hillsboro. My first boyfriend um, was from there. Where Where are you from? It's, uh, North St. Louis. Oh, wow. You drove all the way to Hillsboro. Yeah, see, I was the darkest kid. Like, I was one of the darkest guys in that area. Really? Yeah. Definitely. Are you dark? Yeah, I mean, well, once for sure, when summertime comes, the curly <laughs> hair, it's like, you know, it's, it's yeah. So, I mean, there was a lot of, it was weird. Fucking Jefferson County. It's, um, it, even though it was only 30 minutes from where I lived, 
It was a different culture. Way different. Way different. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's why. I mean, I I have no, I don't I don't belong there. I don't want to be there, you know, because I just. Did you ever? Did you ever go to that Hardee's at like Highway Thirty and? And House Springs. Yeah, I mean, well, spent a lot of time there. Did you really? Yeah. See, I'm not a big Hardee's guy. I never was. So, like, but but I know that like there was the McDonald's, the Taco Bell, Hardee's, and then Captain D's right there. See, in the '90s, that wasn't there. I don't think. Yeah. So that was. Uh, it was just the Hardee's. Really? Yeah. They were the OGs. Wow, I'm fucking old, dude. No, you know. No. I think that's why when you say things like, um, "You show up, you're responsible," it's because I'm old. It doesn't really have anything to do with my character as a person. It's just because I'm old. Well, I mean, no. I just turned fifty this year. Did you really? You yeah. don't. I mean, I guess I don't, fifty is very young. So usually, I, I would say you don't look fifty, but I think fifty is very young. You I, don't look fifty though. I I feel like I feel every bit of sixty though because because of the um. Ill, the fat disorder that I have, which mm. doesn't even sound real. It's a, I have a fat disorder, which is hilarious. Like what of all the things that God would give me? Why that? Um, but my body feels 60, 70 years old. Really? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So what do you, do you think? Uh, I don't know. What is There's nothing to say about it. Yeah, there, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. I guess you just kind of, it's just a chronic illness. You just do what you can and hope for the best. And, uh, often, even though I'm pretty much an atheist, I just say, why me, God? And then I'm like, who am I talking to? Yeah, that's a tough one. But are you a Christian, man? Uh, I don't know what I am. I know I started praying when I like uh, basically, yeah, just because you start figuring, you try to. Well, when did you start praying? I guess, you know, when you get sober and you go through like the AA program, they want you to have a higher power. Right. So you kind of think about stuff like that. I kind of distance i didn't really distance myself from the aa stuff but i just kind of i don't know i just kind of did it on my own and then people would be like well you got to do it this way or else it's not going to work and i'm like well it works it's working Mm -hmm. um but yeah and i think it's just kind of something to where probably because i wanted something and i thought maybe if i pray it'll i'll get it but turns out it doesn't work that way they say he works in mysterious ways. Oh, yeah. That's probably why. Whatever is whatever is going to happen is going to happen, and you just kind of, basically, you just got to just just get through life and just do it. And how long have you been sober? Four years. Uh, four Eight. years, yeah. Over four years. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was definitely something that, like, I know comedians that are, like, basically that was kind of the way it was going, to where, like, you know, you go on the road or you do this or like everything we did, we were drinking like everything because it was a fun thing. And then I was like, shit, I can't keep doing this. So, you know, I'd be drunk and I'd be writing stuff. Be like, this is funny. I wake up and be like, oh, I'm a moron. I'm an actual <laughs> idiot. You know what I mean? Well, drunk people think that, that yeah. they're better when they're drunk. And that's the thing I hate about drunk people. I hate being around drunk people. Yeah. Because you try to tell them like, hey, man, you're being loud and obnoxious. And they're like, what are you talking yeah. It's like, ew. Yeah, which I can't really ever say anything because people are like, dude, don't do that shit to me, man. When you used to just sit here, this <laughs> fucking game wasted with me. <laughs> but nobody ever does that. But usually I'm like, hey, man, take it easy. People don't, they're, they're not going to stop till they're ready. That's no. the unfortunate but thing. But the, the, the really, the good thing, though, is there's not many people that I feel like have to stop. Usually people can, you know, like I have, so, like, basically... Yeah, like I, I have people in my life that I know they're like they have a very good relationship with alcohol, you know. But other people, they're like, no, oh, why don't yeah. you name each and every one, and yeah, we'll right? just record that live here. Oh, I know God. the ones that have a bad relationship. <laughs> you know who you are too. <laughs> no, but well, I'm lucky in that I never had a problem with drinking because I know if I drank, I would have a problem. So, so I try to just stay away from it. So do you feel like you're? Uh, that's kind of where I'm at to where like, <clears throat> hey, let's make a short film. No, fuck that. Let's make a feature. Hey, let's have a couple of beers. No, let's drink a 30 pack. Hey, let's have a shot. No, let's drink the whole bottle. Hey, let's do one line of cocaine. Bring it all. I don't do cocaine or drugs. <laughs> if I did, though, I would be. Oh, absolutely. It would be over with because I'm, I'm full tilt 100. You know what I mean? And it's a positive. It is a good trait to have, but it's also like there's nothing really in moderation. I am the same way. That's why I can't, 
I quit smoking. I can't have just one. Did you quit smoking? Yeah, I stopped. I, well, I quit for like five years and then started again a couple of years ago and then quit last March. And I, I'm not a person that can be like, oh, I'll just have one cigarette. Are there people? I There are there people. There are. I've met them, yeah. But I think it eventually turns into to a you habit. You start going back But now. they'll, that, you know, it was... Do you not use any nicotine things at all or Mm-mm. what? Yeah. I can't. It's hilarious because people are now like listening to the internet, which the, the you know, these health guys or health guys that are like nicotine is good for you. It's, huh? a, it's a good nicotine's a good thing. Tobacco is the bad thing, you know? So everybody's doing these Zen things. Everybody's doing the nicotine stuff because it gives you like some sort of jolt of allegedly scientifically speaking, it's nicotine is supposed to be good for you. Um, or not have any negative impacts. Now, um, mm. so, yeah. My so, brain's like, oh, you could get away with a cigarette. But cigarettes are, I could never stand the way they made me smell. Oh, that's the worst part. Piss me off. I would just be pissed off at myself. Your like, clothes you stink, like your hair stinks. Oh, everything. Nobody wants, that. The, the reason that I quit the second time was because Chelsea, um, I got in the car one time, she's like, ooh, you brought the smoke in with you. And you were like, I'm a piece of shit. And I felt... Like an idiot. I mean, she does it. Yeah. And then uh, non-smokers, they can really smell it. Yeah. But you got to respect the ones that will say like, hey, you know, usually you're like, usually people, yeah, I mean, they're here, their hands will smell like it. They put their hand oh. on your shoulder. You're like, dad, get the, get, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was, but like, the good thing is, is uh, I actually started watching this documentary on Steve Martin and there was a weird joke where he said, do you mind if I smoke or do you mind if I smoke? And they say, do you mind if I fart? Basically, like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, no, stink you, it you're up. just gonna smell like shit. But um, smelling, and uh, I remember, yeah, because my ex girlfriend, she had to stop smoking, and then I still continue to smoke. And like, I was like, I wonder what it feels like to be her, like to have like, you know, there's on my facial hair, so then I just kind of, and then I lay down, and I'm like, oh god, the bed's gonna smell like this. Yep. I had a smoking jacket though. It wasn't like a smoking jacket. It was just like Wanted a jacket that I only smoked in. Well, my coat that I travel with, um, I have this big ugly fur coat that I always travel with. It's not real. And I didn't know I could wash it. So I was smoking in that thing for years and just stinking <laughs> to high heaven for years. Wait, and I then I was like, oh, this? I can wash. I washed it because I thought if I washed it, it was going to yeah, disintegrate because I'm it's almost not even a coat. It's more like a uh, security blanket for me at this point. Oh, yeah. Like, I have to have it. It uh, makes you feel... It makes me feel good because I got a touch of the uh, sensory issues. I got to have, like, a pressure. Really? I was wondering if I kind of have that, too. I think I probably do. Probably neurodivergent. It's probably... I mean, it could be a little bit of everything, but I know that it's... a. Uh, what did I do? I put something on and I was like, oh, yeah, this makes me feel probably why I'm wearing this or because it's anyway. Make, yeah, it makes you feel safe, kind of. Yeah. Touch of the tism is what somebody told me. One yeah. Time. Touch of the tism. Which I don't know is, if that would be considered autism. Spectrum I mean, thing. Uh, I guess it's a uh, not. Uh, um, what was I saying? Offensive. If we say touch of the tism. But if we have it, then it isn't. I don't think I'm autistic. I think I just really do have a. A sensory processing disorder because I can't like all those trucks over there. I can't handle that noise. Like that's driving me fucking nuts. Oh really? Yeah, I remember because I was in the I was in the airport with somebody and I was like I basically was like shiv. That's what happened. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'm seeing it, dude. Like I already thought. He's like, you got you definitely have some of the traits, but it's okay. And I'm like, no, because I had to go change my shirt before I got on the, because I was like, I don't like the way this shirt's feeling. Oh yeah, that. But also, I'm about to get on an airplane and be uncomfortable. And so freezing at that point, cold. Yeah. Well, I'm always hot usually, so. Huh. Lucky you. Oh, really? You I'm could, freezing. Really? That's so, so why I have this little heating pad back here just to keep me warm. Yeah. You scared? Of what? Do you have any questions to ask about any of the items here? Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess you're a new kids on the block, girl. You <laughs> all, yeah, you always have been. Um, John Stamos, that's a funny thing. I have a, I made a short and I mentioned John Stamos's hair. He's like got how, good hair. Like how confident you have to be to be a man in his age and have a nice head full of hair. 
Like, just because it just adds something to you. It just adds, right. like, oh, shit, look at that guy. I mean, he's just everything about him. But he's a, you know, he's a very, very handsome man. He's he's a, he knows he's handsome, but he doesn't act conceited, That's I don't think. That's what's great about it, yeah, right? I would. If I look like him, I'd be like... I kind of I I always wonder if maybe they uh, oh yeah that's John Stamos is uh, Jesus Christ prayer candle yeah yeah um, people give me John Stamos stuff all the time oh do they because I just it, I mean I've always loved John Stamos but it started as a bit me talk like my character Crystal talking about him and then people will like all these precious moment stuff my character loves precious moment stuff so people will bring these to shows. That's funny. It's wild. That's awesome, though, that you have people that, that do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. You don't like I don't understand why people... I'm not going to say it out loud. I just feel lucky that people love me. That's, I bet that's a great feeling, yeah. Well, you give them something in return, though. Like, you give them a lot of joy and a lot that, of laughs. That's what people say, but to hear that, like, I have to start dissociating. Do you think? Yeah. It's hard. Isn't it hard for you to take a compliment or can you take it? Are you like, yeah, I think I kind of just accept that. I usually just, it's very hard because you want to return a compliment with the compliment. It's like, hey, man, just take the compliment. And you're like, I know, but what if it's a good thing to do? You know what I mean? I'm going to say, you didn't, and you just kind of, and it's like, I think it would be cool. I think it opens up the door to have a, a good conversation. You know, like a, hey, let's have a moment together. But when you probably have 15 to 25, 30, 40, whatever it is, 100 people around you, you're like, I can't take the t- individual time with all these people that I would love to give. Oh, God, So yes. it's a thing to where, like, me, somebody, one person might give me a compliment. I'm like, let's talk about life. You're like, sit down. Yeah, sit down, dude. Oh, <laughs> shit. You're the one. You know, like, so it's, but, yeah. And they're I, like, actually, I got to I gotta go, man. You're like, no, come no, on, no, no, man. No, 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 yeah, you want to no. spend the night? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it usually it usually goes from. Yeah, I don't really get a whole lot of them. Oh, well, I swear no, because yeah, it's okay. So sad. It's okay though. Like it doesn't bother me. I think the the gratification comes in the doing, is where I live right now, and like I enjoy what I'm doing. But I know that eventually, if I can make an because the only reason why I want to do this is so I can entertain people, maybe make a difference. There's really no, like, I guess when I first started doing this, it was like, maybe I could meet chicks. You know what I mean? <laughs> but now it's like, you know what I mean? Did that help? Would that, what? Did you meet chicks doing this oh, stuff? Oh, I don't know. No. I mean, being like, no, nobody knew what I who I was. Nobody does. I'm saying, like, you know, obviously you go out, you're like, I'm going to go out to L.A. You know, I'm going to be in a movie and shit. But, like. <laughs> and meet chicks. And meet chicks. Yeah. You know, but it's like, now it's kind of like, I want somebody to watch something I make and then they maybe think about things afterwards or like have a conversation with somebody that they love about the movie about like, what do you think about this? Cause that's what all the best movies I've ever watched. They would like, I'd be like, Hey, we got to talk about this movie. Cause that just blew my mind. What is your favorite movie? Uh, favorite movie. I would say Dazed and Confused is probably there only because it's an all around just perfect. I feel like it's a perfect film. It's written amazingly. The music goes with it. The, the, the everything, the set dressing, the props, haircuts, accents, everything about it. I'm like, this is a Damn. great fucking movie. Dude. I got to watch it. I've never seen it. You've never seen that movie. Mm-hmm. I'm not a good movie watcher anymore. Days and Confused. I mean, it's one of like Matthew McConaughey's first role, or like, you know, big roles. And like, uh, it just, it's just, it takes place over one day in like the 1970s. And it's like a high school. And it has, um, I cannot believe I'm forgetting her name because she's my probably like, like I love her, like I think about her often. Uh, Cindy Crawford. No, no. Marissa Tomei. I'll, I I love Marissa Tomei though. Um, Cher. No, <laughs> it's she's somebody that like <laughs> she was like a, uh, I forget she was like an in, she was like an indie darling in like the you know the late nineties. Oh God, now 2000s. I gotta look. Um, oh, Parker Posey. Oh. When she was in um, Waiting for Guffman. Yeah. Have you Funny. seen that? Yes. You just started watching it. Those kind of movies are my favorite. Waiting are for they? Guffman, Best in Show. That's the kind of film I want to make. I want to make, and I've been saying that for years. It's so funny because we were, I was starting to write with this guy, and he wanted to make a mockumentary in that same exact fashion about, like, uh, essentially, like, 
my brother fights, right? He's a UFC fighter. And he's like, let's make a thing about where there's a, a, a really good MMA fighter. He pulls out of a fight, but there's a clause that, like, if anybody in his direct bloodline can step up and fight, the manager gets paid, and they get, like, his dumbass brother, which would be me. And I was – and I've always wanted to have – I've always <laughs> – Bloodline. Yeah, all I, I've always wanted to have, but it would be very much so. Like that's why I started watching those. Uh, forget the name of the director, but they're yeah, he's hilarious. Christopher, Chris something. Christopher Guest. Yeah. Oh God, it's what I want to do. Yeah. All I want to do. And I imagine you as I was like, we got to have Lib. I was like, I know this woman. She's a comedian. She's funny, Libby, and she could be like this, the love interest. Where like basically like you're just oh. kind of like you're this Never guy's been like the love interest, man. you know what I mean? But it's just goofy and they're off the wall and they're they're awesome though. Those well, are, if you guys do it, I'm in. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's very these things are hilarious. Where it'll be like idea, 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 and I'm like, hey, ideas are easy, right? Executing, starting, Execute. finishing. That's right. the hardest part. I have such a difficult time with writing. Um, I do better when I'm just writing on the spot. It's so frustrating because we're on tour. Tina's like writing about a lot. Chelsea's writing a lot. And here I am just like stagnant. And I've talked about that this whole podcast. Like that's one of my biggest things. And on my podcast, it is a because I'm in a storage unit, but it's also like what am I holding on to that I, I don't need? That's yeah. like kind of the theme. And that's one of the things that I constantly hold on to is that I have such difficulty writing and uh, it's almost hard to let it go because, in a way, it's an excuse for me to be lazy. You know like what I mean? To, to let go of the fact that you have... Like, I just need to be putting putting the work in and putting the work in and putting the work in. I'm sitting down and writing. And it's easier sometimes to just say, like, I can't write. I yeah. got writer's block. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's all excuses. Um. <clears throat> So what I did, this could maybe, I don't know. Basically, I heartbreak, right? So I had no... <laughs> Sad? Mo- yeah, depression. I had no motivation. Still, I'm starting to get there. But, like, so what I did was I, I, like, I guess you could call me a creative, I don't know, an artist. I don't know. I don't say those things. But, like, I've always wanted to make music. So what I did was I just started writing songs. And I started write, making music. And I made a full album, right? Since you were in Nashville? Yeah. So basically, God yeah, I damn. know it's weird over like seven months because I was like, I can't write what I want to write. I know I have to be artistic. I have to do something to get this shit out because it's just how I am. And then I just like would listen to something. And then I'm like, wow, these things, it was, it's a very, it was a very weird feeling. Like it was almost like I wasn't even writing it. It was just like coming out. It was weird. But basically that helped me which I was like, maybe if I'll do this, it'll bridge this whole thing and get me by. And now I just sat down at the computer like a week ago and just wrote like six pages of like dialogue. And I was like, okay, I think I'm back. So have you recorded this album? Oh, yeah. My alter ego, Sad Squatch. Where is it? It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on uh, our Apple Music. Yeah. Is, is that kind of like when Garth Brooks did? <clears throat> Isn't that funny? That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So, like, I don't know. My, I was, uh, I think my, I forget what I was going to, I was called, like, joke artist or something like that. And then I was like, that's stupid. And then my little brother and I were just talking, and then Sad Squatch, and it just came out. And then now it's, like, Sasquatch and the, you know. I have to go listen. I, I It's some of my favorite. It's it's. I'm very proud of it because not only is it something – that I wanted to do. It comes, it's not bad yet. Here it comes when it gets bad, rain. we're going to be fucked. <clears throat> yeah. We're talking about the rain. I don't know if you can hear it. Tina and I did a whole episode, and it was raining, and it was it's wasted. Oh, really? Did she come here? Yeah, she comes here because we're trying to split up Slop City, so I don't have to drive down there every time. So she'll come up here, and I'll go there. Oh, God, come on. We'll be fine. You know what's good about this is, um, <clears throat> well, you know more than I do, but sometimes when I think the sound's going to be really bad, it's nowhere near as bad as I think it is. But this one could be, you know. <laughs> this, I mean, it's, it should be fine. It was raining heavily when we did it. 
And I think people are more uh, forgiving because they know I'm in a storage unit. So they're like, it's going to be cold. It's going to be hot. The elements. She's going to be, sometimes it's so hot in here, these cameras will overheat. There it goes. That's too much. What happens if there's a tornado? We die. <laughs> what do you mean what happens? We pass away. That's too loud. I don't know what I... We're just going to keep talking and just... <laughs> it, it ramps up. Hey, fuck you! <laughs> Rain? Mother Nature. What should we do? We've been going about 36 minutes. We need more, I think. Because we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, Let's just keep up. going. And if they don't like the sound, they can turn it off. And yeah, or if you're just like, hey, that was a complete fucking dud of a podcast and you want to pitch it, I'm good with it no, too. I'm, I always like talking to you anyway. I love uh, what we've talked about so far. Yeah. I really do. I feel like you are being um, vulnerable, which can be difficult for men sometimes. I But to see me, I love it. Sometimes men are like, oh, I'm scared. Yeah, and man. that's because we've taught men to be scared. I think so. I guess you know. I, I it's a very tough thing to like figure that out. Like it's a. I try to like. That's another thing. I started going to therapy a long a while ago. But I mean, it's like a thing to where, now you're this guy who doesn't drink. You go to therapy, and all these other guys are like, "What the fuck are you trying to do, dude?" I'm like, "I don't know, man. I'm just trying to like <laughs> maybe stay alive, dude. I don't know, you know." But like. It's never like a thing that I ever talk about. But I do talk about therapy because it's cool. It's fun, but like and it helps. It does help. I mean, why wouldn't you want to do something? <clears throat> but it's um, yeah, it doesn't really ever bother me. Thank. You. I appreciate you being vulnerable. Yeah, and honest. No, I appreciate you giving me the platform to do that. Wouldn't it be funny if we didn't even have pressed record yet? Yeah, none of this worked. What do you do in Nashville? What do you do? I just uh, <clears throat> um, just I, in general. In general, basically, when I first moved here, I was trying to do some video work. This another like commercial freelance stuff, which is to me just not what I want to do at all. And I was just like, "F that!" So then I just got a job. Now I uh, like serve table, I wait tables off at, at Broadway Brew House on Broadway. God, how do you get down there? I love it. How do you how do you physically get down there? Where do you park? I drive, and I got a parking garage that I go to and then we get a parking sticker that's only 10 bucks and then you go in there and you make some money and then you leave. Nice. And I thought, and I mean, but I love like the people, I love being around that many people and I just put my headphones in and I think I'm in a fucking music video. So you're waiting on tables, you said? Oh yeah. When you approach a table, give me your spiel. It's amazing, isn't it? Give me the spiel that you say. It's just say, how we doing today, guys? Hey, how we doing today? Do you do this a lot? Hey, yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. You know, no, I, I'm really, I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very, uh, hey, how we doing today, guys? My name's Eric. I'll be taking care of you. And this is how easy it is. There's a QR code here on the menu. You go ahead and get that. We got 72 beers on tap. You'll get that. We Whoa. have a full bar. And also we have Coke products. And they're like, this guy's on drugs. <laughs> and and when you say Coke products, uh, that's immediately when I'll say, I'm staying here. Yeah. Because if you would have said, is Pepsi okay? Mm-hmm. That's when I would have gotten my little purse like this. This is my purse and gone. We will be leaving. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people do that. <laughs> you know, and it made me th- like when, when it's like, do you have Diet Coke? Turns out everybody just wants Diet Coke. Or uh, now Coke, Diet or, Coke or, Zero. Or we have Coke Zero and we have... Uh, you do? No, we don't. I'm sorry. Somebody asked me if we did and I'm like, no, we don't. But the coolest thing about that place is they're just like, it's like the perfect place for me. Like what I'm realizing is... There's really no manager, no boss. You go Hell in, yeah. you go in and you show up, you do your job, you be honest, you do things right. And like, basically you kind of, it, it's like ran by the people there. There are higher ups, but like, there's no GM being like, Oh, can you tuck your shirt in dude? And I'm like, yeah, dude, get away from me. You know, you're like, I'm a grown man. I'm yeah, not wearing an apron. Shirt. You know, I haven't wore the apron yet. So I'm like, I'm timid to put an apron back on. Do you have a, a booklet I that you write in? I just got a book. I bought one, wow. and I'm going full. I'm going full. I'm going. I'm diving back into life. Now, let me hit you with some scenarios, and you, and you tell me how to respond. Let's see. <laughs> Hi, sir. Um, my son is gluten free. Jesus. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm glu- uh, my son's gluten free, and I am allergic to fish. Are there any options for us here? I say you. you no. 
You're going to have to get out of here. All right. Then I would take my Do book. you value your own life or your son's life if you do? <laughs> so the other day I had a, I had the, I had a table and I would much rather bartend. I love bartending I, because I, I would much rather deal with drunk people than hungry people. Mm-hmm. Like a drunk person, I can say shit like I can say whatever I want and then lie about what I said. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, just fucking relax, dude. <laughs> and he's like, what? You know, and I'm just like, that's so true. Yeah. And then now if a hungry person is like, nothing's working and I'm going to lose. And I'm like, you're hungry. Eat some food. That happened the other yesterday. Actually, a woman like fucking lost her mind over this salad, not being tossed. And like, just (laughs) I'm talking. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm like, maybe if you're nice enough, your husband will toss your salad. (laughs) Then they didn't get it. Wow. Yeah. There's something about that, though, because bartenders can treat you like shit. And mm-hmm. you're, it's like you're, you have to put up with it. You have to. I mean, I don't go out of my way. Like if somebody, now if somebody's like drunk and being like obnoxious or being to the point to where I'm like, hey, dude, I've asked you for your card three times. And they're like, just stare at you. <laughs> well, I gave it to you, bro. <laughs> you know, but it's a, you know, or they're just like, so I don't get like why if it's a double, why isn't it? And I'm like, I don't know, man. That's just the way it is. Can I have your card? Boom. Thank you. And then what are you going to give me? A dollar? Two? Perfect. On to the next. So it's all about like, like I'm and, very fast. Like, and what's your spiel at the end? <clears throat> hey, you guys have, usually I'll find out what they've done, like what's going on. Like uh, they're going to a game. Hey, enjoy the game. Be safe. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. What if I'm like, yeah, we're going to my grandma's funeral. She passed away and. It was a violent, violent death. Oh, man. I would say, uh, I have no idea. I would just say. Uh, have, have fun at the funeral. I'd say, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm sure your grandmother was a wonderful woman. <laughs> no, I'd say, hey, I, the hush puppies are on me. Oh, you guys have hush puppies? You get, you get two of them. You might like it because, no, wait, not Cap. You said Hardy's. I was thinking Captain D's. Well, I love Captain D's. Do um it. But I found out this week that my cholesterol is extremely high, and I'm, I'm looking at, and it has been for years. It's just, I went to an actual cardiologist uh, for something else because he's a specialist in the fat disorder I have. Took my blood and discovered my cholesterol is high, and, and I'm looking at things that I can't eat. And I think hush puppies might be on that list. <laughs> yeah, they probably are. So I'm now that, that person that's like, oh, my cholesterol is high. It's like, shut up, grandmother. Yeah. YOLO. Yeah. Do you say that when you go places? You're like, hey, I, my, I have high cholesterol. What do you recommend? No, but I'm going to start saying it. Really? I would have no idea what to <laughs> say to you. I would say high cholesterol. Uh, I guess stick with a leafy green vegetable. <clears throat> is that what they say? I mean, just anything that I like is gonna, probably going to have chole- a lot of cholesterol. Yeah. Which is ridiculous because the shit always changes. In the 80s... I said this the other day in one of my, my food reviews, like butter was bad for you in the eighties and they wanted you to eat margarine. Turns out margarine's fucking bad for you. Yeah. And we're back to butter. I think what's gonna happen is I'm probably just gonna continue doing what I'm doing and I'm gonna be in the Guinness Book of World Records for probably having the highest cholesterol uh, of any living person. You think that's a possibility? <laughs> when they when they when they told you like your cholesterol where they where you were like, Oh, and then you didn't know if it was bad or not, and they were like, no, this is bad. Well, he said it was high, and he's putting me on cholesterol meds. But then I looked at the little charts online, and you know how to have, like, green, yellow, red, like, dark red. I'm, like, in that dark red. I'm, like, not okay. I could probably pass away at any moment. Man. But you know what I don't have? Diabetes. Oh, really? And I've had plenty of doctors say, you sure you don't have diabetes? I'm like, no, dude, I'm good. <laughs> There's no way someone your size could not have diabetes. Yeah. That's good though, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's good. I got one good thing going for me. So uh <laughs> <laughs> as far as the cholesterol goes, I think I was worried about it. I think it kind of runs in my family a little bit. Look, you can look anyway and have high cholesterol, right? Yeah. 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 So I mean it's uh just a weird thing. I know what you're saying, though. It's a weird thing that, like, uh, you get to that age to where you're now talking about the cl- you're the cholesterol person. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I'm that. And I never thought I would be because when I, all my life, it felt like I was always the youngest person at my job. You know, I was always the baby, 
the girl that like didn't know stuff. And now I'm, I'm truly the o- older person that people come to. On the road? Yeah. Which is probably awesome. No. I, I don't know fucking know anything. I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. But that's why it's probably awesome because they don't have some. I've learned that like a lot of these, you call them like an OG, right? Mm-hmm. And like it all depends on your mentor like or your OG or whatever. And it's like if this person, you know, because assistant directors, for some reason, they are like these ball busting fucking like, you know, like just mean. They have just this very ignorant, angry tone to them. And then they have to be like the assholes to the director, like kind of making sure everybody's okay. But then I did this one thing and the AD was like the super nice, kind person. And I was just like, dude, why are you? And he's just like, I don't know. It's just how I learned. And I'm like, oh, so they don't have to be like this. They are this way because whoever they, whoever was their mentor or their OG or their road mom or road dad, whatever, like that's what they taught them. So you, you're probably, you're probably making a lot of people a lot kinder and easygoing. Uh... I hope. Or neurotic. Or neurotic. I'm very neurotic. Are you? I, yeah. gu- I guess that's kind of a I thing. Just, I just have a lot of things. Like, I need a lot of things to be comfortable. I need stuff around me, which I guess is another theme. For me to feel safe, I need stuff around me. I need to have certain things happen at certain times. Really? I just... I like order. You do a very good job. Like, you don't let any of that get in your way. Like, I mean, if if we were working, whatever, like, you don't let any of that shit, like, make you seem like you're outwardly or inwardly frustrated or, like, freaking out, you know? Because a lot of times that's, like, the whole point of this stuff is, like, not showing, like, your nervousness on the Mm -hmm. inside or your anxiety, your anger or whatever it is and just being, you know... So, yeah, you do a good job of hiding it if it's like, oh, shit, this is not going. Because that's it's a very tough thing for me if I have, like, a schedule or whatever and weren't like today, hey, ETA 1204, I'm like, you're an idiot, Eric. You're four minutes late. Because it's just a weird thing. Like, I'm very schedule and time oriented. Oh, me too. So it's. Uh, the four minutes didn't bother me. Now, had it been 30 minutes, I'd have been like. <laughs> no, I would never do that to somebody. I would never. I there would, are people that do it, though. Well, and those people, you just say, you maybe give them one more shot. And then other than that. Uh, euthanize them? Yeah, you haven't you haven't put down. You haven't put down like yeah. old dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> you have somebody take care of it. Damn. No, you just kind of. But also, that's a very. Yeah, I'd be. I have no problem saying something to somebody either. Oh, I do. You don't, or you do. I can't confront people about anything. Oh, really? There's you, been a couple of times in my life where I had to sit down and have hard conversations with people and it was like <sighs> the worst i'm more good at being passive aggressive <laughs> which is a good thing yeah no, i'm like it's not I, actually it is i can't stand passive aggressive people but I, I i can when i know their personality and i know like but also like i love when i have a passive aggressive friend or whatever and they like i can tell they're getting their buttons pushed by somebody and they're doing their thing and then i kind of just keep just digging it and making it go deeper and deeper to where you're like, like, you'd be like, fucking quit. And this person's like, I don't know what's going on. It's just a fun thing for me mm-hmm. to do. Because I'm like, she's not very happy, but she doesn't know how to show. It. This is how she shows her anger. And anger is a weird thing, too. What, you're either hot or cold? I just, I didn't know that it was okay to be angry um, probably until about 10 years ago. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like it's, it's not, you're not, we, I wasn't taught as a kid, like it's okay to be angry. Because you would be considered like the crazy lady? Um, just, there was just a lot of like, I had big emotions as a kid. So my emotions were never really, um, I'm not going to say they weren't accepted. I was made fun of a lot by my family kind of for having bigger emotions, and anger just wasn't an emotion that I ever was able to really process. It was when I, like, started to, uh, like, leave my husband and, and stuff that, like, all this anger came up. And I would be, like, in my house, like, physically throwing stuff. I know it sounds crazy. But before that, I hadn't had a, a, an outlet for or anger even knew how to identify it. So you were... uh <clears throat> When you were married, you were not you were not showing anger. No, but or then, any time really in my life. And then afterwards, you were throwing stuff, or while he was there, you were well, like throwing. Well, after shit. he left, I I was very angry, and I took his stuff, and I at one point I threw it outside, 
all this stuff, but then I went back outside and got it because well, I'm like, yeah. I can't fucking leave all this shit out there. Yeah. But it was at that time where I was like, I, I think I feel angry. And I had to learn how to feel angry. There's definitely, Does that make sense? No, for sure. I think that there's, there's definitely ways to like, once you put your finger on why you're angry, mm-hmm. now you can justify your anger. But if you're just flailing around like a, an eight-year-old who has no control over their emotions, right. then the people are like, dude, you're 42 years old. Acting <laughs> like the lady p- pissed off about the salad. I'm like, right. what's going on? Your husband must hate his life. And it, it's even working with kids, like I was able to help them identify like, oh, it looks like you feel angry. Here's some choices you could do. Because yeah. I work with kids with autism. You can take a break. You can, you know. I didn't know how to do that for myself because I didn't even identify that I was angry because I had pushed it down, I guess. Yeah. No, that's definitely something to where, and I think that's where people are saying that the youth is being, uh, you know, like, hey, your emotions, we see, da, 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 da. but it's like, it is okay, I think, to probably work through kids, work through, because you're developing these traits that they can bring on to their adulthood. You know what I mean? So if we aren't taught this as children, we're going to grow up as a angry 27, 28 year old angry guy like myself. And are it's you like, 27? No, I'm 35. But I was going to say, I don't even know how old you that are. You're like, dude, you look 40. <laughs> no, I was not going to say that. I was like, man, I worked with you when you were young. Yeah. Then. No, I'm, I'm, I'll be 36 in August, but it's something to where like, I'm no, nowhere. I'm not this deep at all, but it's something to where like, those are positive things to learn because some, some men, my dad's age, they never, they might still emotionally be the age that they were when their dad passed away or left or whatever it is. This, you know, that's just kind of stuff that I've talked to with people, you know, like. And people will say, I've seen stuff online, you know, like, Oh, we're making our boys sissies or, um, you know, we're snowflakes, but I don't think there's anything with, thing wrong with people being able to identify how they feel yeah. and and being able to like do what they can with the I emotions. promise you right now my son will beat any of those sons asses <laughs> and he will also cry right outside like me if someone's like I'm like yeah dude you I will fight you I guess if we want to fight but like or we can cry and talk about it like it's just let's do both I mean me I'm just like I don't know I just don't like when pe- I don't like when people say that stuff I I don't have kids so like, are I you don't, gonna have kids? I thought about it. I thought maybe at one point with this girl Aww. who just ripped my heart out of my chest. But I'm fine. I'm okay. No, no, I th- I never really wanted them. And then I met her, and I was like, maybe. And then I started being around my nephews, and I was like, this would be cool. But we'll see what happens. I mean, well, you won't get to take a nap ever again. I know. I kind of have no. I mean, I get kind of drained being around my nephews, but also <laughs> like. Yeah, I get. Do you have I, Do you have kids? Fuck no. Okay. Hell no. I value my time. And I never wanted to be, you know, because I didn't. There was one point, even when I was like a, you know, hanging out, partying, drinking. Like I never wanted to be that like that uncle that was like single and still like going out to bars and having a good time, and then like showing up to his you know, nephew's little league game kind of hung over with like a new girl. I've never thought that was a cool man at all. Mm -hmm. So like now I'm kind of like, I'm excited to be like another positive role model in like whatever little, like I just found out, we found out my little brother and and my sister-in-law, they're going to have a baby, you know? So now, you know, my little Eric again. Oh yeah. Not drunkle uncle. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fun thing to wear. And so now I have to make a, you know, like an actual, what is it called? I want to make it like, I for sure want to be a part of all of their lives. You know, I don't want to be that weird uncle that shows up like once a year. It's like, is your uncle Eric? And they're like, what the fuck, dude? Because I was <laughs> that way. I was that way. You're like, here's my truck. Here's the, you know what I mean? Like as a little kid, you don't know what to say to these people. Right. You remember your uncle Tom? No, I don't. Do you have any family in Nashville? I have my brother, Your my brother? older brother. and So that's what's cool. That's why I'm here mainly because mm-hmm. it's close to St. Louis. It's kind of a, you know, it's a city that like things are happening, you know. So like I can meet other people that are doing diff- things outside of like the, you know, the corporate landscape. Mm-hmm. So. How often do you go back to St. Louis? St. Louis. I, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I, I didn't, I didn't a lot for like a long time. Cause I just didn't like it. 
I don't like St. Louis. I don't like it either. You don't like I, it? When I go there, I can't wait to get out. Sometimes I'll go down there, film the podcast, and come back to you. You get day. a weird feeling? Uh, I just, it stinks to me now. The, the, the air? Yeah, it stinks. And I just don't, it doesn't feel like home. No. And this doesn't even necessarily feel like home to me. It's crazy. Uh, but it feels more Your home than St. Louis. <laughs> A beautiful storage unit. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, there's a lyric from "I Love Music," and like uh, one of the lyrics was like, "I don't even know where home is anymore because they're on the road so much." Mm-hmm. And also, they, you know, so it's. And I was like, "Man, is that a good thing?" But I'm like, you know, whatever. I don't even know where home <laughs> yeah, is. It's more of like a loud whiny, <laughs> you know. I, yeah, it's weird to not feel like you have a home. Well, you just, you know, like, where where would you, you know, plant roots? Where, like, to me, I'm like, man, home is wherever I know I can get groceries. Home is where, like, you know. And where do you get groceries? You know, there, I go to Aldi. That's where um, I went yesterday. Costco. No more schnooks for us. No. Which I've never been a fan of schnooks. What about Deerberg's? No. It was a yuppie shit. What else did we have in St. Louis? Price Chopper. Got that was a big Jeffco Schnucks. one. Yeah. Schnooks is... Save a lot. Save a lot. Got bought out by Schnooks. Just a monopoly. Really? Yeah. I believe. Now, everything in Save a Lot is pretty much saturated fat. That's going to be a cholesterol-heavy <laughs> grocery store. <laughs> so, that's kind of where, like, yeah, I mean, but you go to Deerberg's and it's like, that's where you get your cheese, your good shit. You know right. what I mean? And then, you know, more of the, you know, I was more like... As I'm getting older, I kind of like, you know, maybe pay attention to that stuff a little bit more. But also, like, I don't buy, I buy the same shit everywhere I go. So it's like. What's your favorite uh, oh name brand at Aldi? Favorite name brand at Aldi? What, what is one of your favorite brands at Aldi? I don't even know what name brands. What about a Clancy's? There's a Clancy's. I was going to say, there's Clancy. <laughs> there's like the Jim's or the, there's the Sims. Sims, like a uh, jerky. <laughs> So yeah, Clancy's. What about a Clancy's? Yeah, I mean, they have red, they have like a red line or red thunder, like energy drinks that I'll get there. Um, they have, a, I mainly just go there and I get like, a, yeah. What about an Aldi's Fines? You know what that is? No. Those are those, that aisle that has all the weird shit that. I catch myself going down that aisle oh, and having a it. fantastic time. There's a, a group on Facebook about like, all these finds and like what's there this week and which stores have what i like start convincing myself that this is i'm like you know what i do need one of these i do need a skillet uh, yeah. a tire iron and a tent yeah it's it is everything <laughs> in there yeah and some gardening gloves yeah you could get anything and it'll be like here's a jar of pasta for like you know two dollars and you're like yeah, I'll put that in there too <laughs> but no i mean the aldi thing is Aldi is to me one of the greatest things ever made. Oh, I love uh, it. And just the it there's there's one, here's the deal. They're very fast when they check you out. Oh. They will get their asses up there if the line is not moving and I love it. No one faster. No. And they're just Sometimes I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah, get all my stuff. You don't want to be part of the problem. So you better, you know, you got to get your shit together before you go. To, you have to be yeah. And then um I make sure I take cuz I don't I go to I always wear I love going to grocery stores, listening to music, and then just walking around and, and shopping. That's like my thing. I don't know why. It's very calming. Um, and then somebody's like, hey, and you're like, what's that? Yeah. I say, why are you talking to me? <laughs> no, usually I will, you know, I'll ask somebody a weird question like, uh, you know, why do you hit the watermelon? Why are you hitting that cantaloupe? Will you please explain it to me? And they're like, honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't know. They're and right. I'm like, everybody's just doing this shit. But then somebody would be like, you got to smell it. I had a conversation with like an 80-year-old man one time about cantaloupe. You got to hit it. Yeah. Like I hit my <laughs> wife's Martha's bottom. <laughs> you got to see if it's good. Yeah, yeah Martha. <laughs> I, uh, uh, Martha could back it up for many years. <laughs> Shit, what were we talking about before, Martha? Aldi. Aldi also, the quarter thing. That has not changed since it, since the conception of Aldi. And like one thing <clears throat> that like I thought of was if I was somebody who was unhoused or homeless, I don't know 
what would you say, but like I would hang out at an Aldi and I would basically just take people's carts back and just make a quarter every cart. And I guarantee you people would say, oh, yeah, go ahead and take my cart. Mm -hmm. Like I guarantee you and I'd make six, seven, eight bucks a day. And this is strange that you talk about that because yesterday on the side of the road I saw an Aldi cart that a person had filled with their belongings. And I I do have a bit about Aldi's carts, but I thought about adding to it because really a quarter is not that much. But somehow they've got us brainwashed like we got to get our fucking quarter they back. Do. It's, it's, it's it, a quarter, dude. It's funny though, isn't it? I love it. And I'm like, homeless people are smarter because they're like, it's just a fucking quarter. I'm taking this whole goddamn cart. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. This I'm cart take this can get me cart. 50 cents at a yeah. metal place. Yeah, true. It's they, and it, 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 it really goes to show like how much like the human mind has not changed. Like even like with things like people still think about that quarter. Mm-hmm. So like you just, there's just something there to where you're like, okay, if that quarter, if this has all stayed the same for 80 years, you know, certain jokes will still land certain mm-hmm. th- you know, people still have the same kind of personalities. You know, it's just, it's we've just oversaturated with a bunch of shit around us. It's a quarter. I'm a philosopher, I guess. For you, whatever. It, and all of it stems from you talking about all Descartes. Yeah, I don't know. I just because it's this, that's why that's what I mean. I just sit with my headphones <laughs> in and I just watch people, and I'm like, but I do, I do. I'm a big observer and people watcher. I guess my degree was sociology, but like that's what I, I love writing about people. I love people. I love why they do the things they do. I just love it. I think it's awesome. Same. Yeah. I think comedians love that shit too. I think. I think. If I would have gotten my shit together, if I would have done, I mean, I probably would have done that, but I just. Well, first of all, I'm just going to say whatever it is, you can still do it. I can do it, but I there's here's the to me though. Like when I first went to my first acting class, like I didn't go, and the acting coach called me and he's like, "Why didn't you come?" And I was like, "I'm just man. When I start doing this, like I'm not going to not like I'm going. It's my life is going to change. I'm going 100 miles. I'm reading everything. I'm doing this. I'm like I'm taking this serious, and I think that that's what you have to do with stand up comedy too." Like, you have to respect the craft. You have to respect the art form. And I'm like. Yeah, sounds like an excuse to me. It does. I just would rather be more. I would be like, (laughs) I've already got all this going. And I don't want to come in here and disrespect this. It is an excuse. Also, it's like. Just fucking do it. I probably will. I mean, but I think that I'm starting to figure out my mature voice right now. Like, I'm realizing that. Ten years ago, I would have gotten up there and been like rambunctious, and now You're like chicks are cool to fuck. I never would say that. <laughs> never. I would, I would be the guy talking about how big of a. I would say, I don't know what I would say. I think I have a bit about. Uh, uh, it's all the process, though. It is the process, but I think also figuring out why, like, what is funny and what isn't funny, is awesome to me too. And like, it's scary. It is scary, but like, I think it would be more fun for me to make fun of myself if a joke, if I'm like, I'm fucking, I suck, obviously. You know what I mean? I don't, I just think it would be, and then maybe it's like, if that's not working, just go to that. Obviously, easier said than done, but like, I don't know. I guess it's better to know when you're bombing rather than thinking that you're doing okay. Like, (laughs) oh, you know when you're bombing. But some people might not. Yeah, that's true. Some people don't have that that awareness. awareness, Yeah. (laughs) And you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes you are up there and you're like, man, that sucked. And everybody's like, wow, that was so great. It's like, were you at the same show as me? Yeah, that'll happen. God, I'm getting colder. Yeah. We're going to wrap in a f- few minutes because I'm about to piss in my pants. But that's definitely something that um, it's more or less about how the audience feels and not how you're feeling inside, right? Because mm-hmm. when I'm up there feeling scared, that's what I feel when I'm up there. Well, not as bad. I'm more scared before I go on. So when I'm up there, it's it's just a lot of muscle memory. Yeah. Really, but. Because I, I trained acting on a stage. <sighs> so, like, it was that moment before you step on is, like, it became a drug. It became something to where I was, like, I kind of missed that feeling. But then when you get up there, your technique takes over. And your muscle memory. And then that's when you realize like, oh, shit, I have this tool and I have this tool and I have this. And wait, if this happens and I just, my body does this. I don't know. It's, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a fun thing. Where did you take acting classes? I did in, I lived in Vegas. I did there one, I did there with a guy who studied with uh, like the best acting, Stella Adler and uh, Lee Strasberg in New York, which are like the method people. 
And then um, I st- studied at Playhouse West Studio 4 in Los Angeles. Damn. I want to do all that. It's fun. You would really, you would enjoy. I mean, so like Playhouse West was, uh, it's, it's improvising, but you stick to a truth. So like you can't just say like anything you want. Like what you're saying and what you're improvising has to stick with that story. Kind of like what we were doing. Where like you can't just go off on this thing like because it just it doesn't make sense for what the truth is of the story, mm-hmm. and then when that scene's over with like that moment's dead and it's like it's a very like it's a very listen and respond thing. That's what makes me sad about improv because once you do the improv scene, it's gone forever. It's gone. <sighs> you can never recreate it. You can't. So you just hopefully like you just appreciate the lightning in a bottle. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Me and Tina do a lot of improv on Slap City. Yeah. So those moments are there, but it's like you can't. Some about, some about improv just gets me going, man. You guys are good. You're very good at it. Stop. I haven't been playing nearly as many sound effects as usually. Because I talk to, I talk a lot. Because we're, we're chatting it up. So I forgot where all these were. Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest, Eric Chandler. You might know him from such hits as Call Me Down, Bro. <laughs> Call Me Down, Bro. I don't really have, I have, you know what? I have a lot of stuff on my YouTube. Um, yeah, plug whatever you want here as we get towards the end. Yeah, so. Plug it all. So I've been making shit. First of all, one of the coolest things, and this is what kind of person Libby is, is when we were having that shitty moment on set, like in in um, in the library, because it was becoming it was becoming a lot, and we were getting crunched for time. I was in my head like, okay, like cutting the scene, like okay, we just got to shoot this, we got to shoot that, and then all of a sudden it was like, I don't know, I'll figure it out. And then you said, you always do, is what you said, and I like kept that in the back of my mind the whole time I was like making the movie. Cause it was like, it's those little things that people say where you're like, hold on to that rather than like these negative things, like mm-hmm. prove the people right rather than thinking about the people, you know, proving the ones wrong. You know what I'm saying? That's wild that you kept that in your head. I just think because it's something to where it's like, because this shit's hard. So you're like, you right. better hold on to every little positive thing you can get, you know? But yeah, I just remember that you saying that. And that was something that was cool to me. Um, but this movie that we that I'm finishing right now is called How You Are. And I originally made it in 2015 just by getting a camera and just making it. And it sucked. It was it was it was it was fun, but like it was just my way of uh putting myself through film school or whatnot. And then basically I went and did this movie with uh, a pretty well known comedian actually. Uh it's a very serious one. Carrot role. top? No. <laughs> Carrot top. Fucking weird looking guy. <laughs> I would love to work with Polly Shore at one point. Polly. Polly's, f- but I want Polly in a serious role. And he just did one, didn't he? He did do one, but it's still Polly. It's still a little bit of the weasel. You know, I want a little bit of like, I want Polly to like, I want Polly to go full. I'll figure it out with him. No, but we did this movie uh, with Kevin James. So it was fun. Yeah. It was a very, uh, it's a very serious movie. I cry like almost every scene I'm in. And I'm What's like, it called? Well, I guess the working title is called The Visitator. But um, I went out there to New York and I did this and it was like, holy shit, put your big boy pants on. You're in a movie. All you have to think about is acting. All you have to think about is your dialogue and you have to go there and do the acting thing. And it was like the most fun I've ever had in my life because I was doing exactly what I wanted to do and not think about like anything else. But with these things, I knew that they don't, they don't really come out immediately. So I knew like, uh, I better start, uh, I better start, uh, better make my own movie. And then that's when I started writing how you are and then shot it, filmed it or shot it. And we edited it. We're editing it right now. And then we're going to try to get into like the, all the, the big festivals. So I have you, Sean O'Brien, Greg Warren, uh, Shit, Rebecca Jaffe, Megan. Uh, God, that's all comedians. So, because to me, I'm like, who are the biggest stars in St. Louis? 
You know what I mean? And I'm like, who are the funniest people that I know? And I'm like, so my goal was to get these people right now and then make the best movie you can make and then show it to somebody and say, now these people are very good. However, you know, maybe we can get like a John Stamos for another movie. You know what I mean? To where you just show. Or what a Cindy Crawford. Or a Cindy Crawford. Yeah. Cindy Crawford. <laughs> but or, or I could just continue to just make things with the people that are still in St. Louis. And I, 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 I like all those people. And it's just, that's what I did. It was kind of like. They are all comedians mm -hmm. because I'm telling you right now, the acting pool in St. Louis is a very good. Greg Warren is great. Greg's good. Greg's good. Greg's a good guy. He's the one that like linked me up. I said, who are the, who are some young hungry, like comedians that like they, they take it seriously that one of them. And he's like, these three or four people are good. Hell yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's always just people helping people and like, relationships matter you know so like and that's why you should always be kind to people always always that's one of the things that we hear excuse me something was in there when we go to clubs on tour it's like the the club people are like you guys were the nicest people we've ever worked with isn't that amazing it's like why can't people just be kind they remember that i know and maybe you'll get an opportunity just because you're kind i know you will 100 percent. like i mean just and I'm a like I'm a relatively nobody, right? So it's like when I think about some of the people that I've worked with, like Alexis, uh, Alexis Winford. She's also somebody from. Oh, you know Alexis? Yes, she's so funny. <laughs> so she is a she shows up. She's incredible. She gives her time. She brings her talent. She's she's she listens, and I'm I'm not saying like she listens, but it's like when you're doing all this stuff, like. She gets it. And if I'm just like, hey, could you try to do this? Or we need to, like, it's like quick. And like, I would forever put her in every single thing I ever make because of, because of those things. And she's nice. And she makes people around her feel like they're, you know, they feel happy to be a part of something when she's around. She's an incredible improviser. She's good too. And I haven't really. Uh, God damn. So funny. Yeah. She's, I've seen some of this stuff and I like her. Yeah, I like her, like her straight. She's like, I like her with like kind of, um, she's got a certain like style that I like about her. And it's fun. Is that getting on your nerves? No. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to plug? Because if I don't go pee soon, um, I'm going to piss on this floor. Yeah, I want I you to plug everything that you need to plug. I don't really know. Um no, definitely the the sad squatch thing. That's a fun. That's a fun. Do you have a um a friendster or a MySpace that you want to plug? Oh, I have an. Uh, I do a Instagram. A friendster. What the <laughs> fuck is a friendster? You're so young. You don't even know what a friendster. Friendster was like a just a social media thing back in the day. It's called friendster. Yeah. Friendster dot com. Yeah. No. Oh come on! My uh, my Instagram is Eric underscore Chandler. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a little active on it, but I mean. If anything, it's uh, Eric underscore Chandler, and you'll be able to figure you'll be able to follow along to figure out when we're releasing the movie. And then what I'll probably do is end up getting some sort of link or something, and then um, eventually everybody that loves you, you know, they'll be able to check it out. Yeah. If if I look at it and I like it, what if yeah. I look at it and I'm like, <coughs> No, you're good. It's good. I mean, you're right. No, that's true. I will definitely. I'll send you a link. And if you're like, Hey, I don't want to be a part of this movie, and I'll say, Oh, fuck. Okay, we don't have a movie. I guess I never thought about that, but I make sure to be smart enough to not do anything dumb or write stupid stuff or like derogatory things. And well, I did do a scene where um, I played his yeah, naughty babysitter, that. and in the scene, he was supposed to massage my feet, and I couldn't handle it. He had to massage his girlfriend's feet. Yeah, she brought in the stunt feet. Stunt feet. feet. <laughs> it was too much. Somebody touching my feet is way too intimate. I didn't really think about that until at, we were there, and I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this isn't good. <laughs> this is not good at all. I'm, like, lotioning my hands up. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then Paige was like, uh, oh, shit, I said her name. I'll beep it. <laughs> I got to send myself a note. No, I'm joking. You could keep it in. Really? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Did, well, you know, some people don't want. No, it doesn't matter. Here, do care. it again. No. Oh, and then Wait, Billy. Wrong one. Wrong one. I'm going to call her Mildred. Her name is. <laughs> Your her mom and uh, her her mom really is a very big fan of you. You 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 met them at the the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys still talk? Uh, no. 
we didn't for uh, for a while, and then we talked over the uh, over winter when you know she was whatever, and then we don't talk anymore. I'm sorry. No, it is what it is. I'm honestly, it's a there's a reason for everything. So yep, the reason is maybe one day you'll meet Cindy Crawford. Yeah, I don't even know how old Cindy Crawford is. Doesn't matter. You're right. She could be the love of your life. I'm messing with the guy that's really young right now. I say messing with as like I'm messing with it's you. been three years. I shouldn't say messing. I was going to say it. okay. So all right. I just I don't like to publicly put a label on it just because. Yeah, you're just messing. It makes me uncomfortable to do it, but uh, the guy's 35. That's not bad. <laughs> yes. It is. No, it's not. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but you guys seem very happy. We have a good time, and, yeah, and you have to a me, good that's time. Yeah. that's like the deal. Like we have a lot of fun, and uh, that's all that it matters to me. I think that that's. I think that the after this relationship thing, it's like life is very difficult, right? Sometimes, and it's like, who are you going to attack it with, and who are you going to have a good time with? And if I wasn't her person, then you know she wasn't mine. Then whatever. You just got to be able to. You got to be able to entertain each other and enjoy life together, and like. You know, not sweat the small stuff and be compatible as well. Compatible. But, yeah. The way you said compatible. Compatible. I'm looking at a big crow out there. God, it's getting colder too, isn't it? It is. Thanks for coming in here. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you, and I love it. We could do it again. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it, whatever. I would love to do it again. And with that, I say, go follow Eric. If you don't, I mean, that's your own personal choice. I'm just yeah. saying you should. So you can see what's going on in his life. Oh, one more question. Uh, if you could bang any um, oh, cereal mascot, which one would it be? Cereal mascot? Yeah, like a cereal, you know, like, I'm not going to give you examples. I thought you were going to say cereal killer. And I was like, oh, fudge. Mm-mm. And immediately I'm like, oh, yeah. You're um, like Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, cereal mascot. Um, oh my god! <laughs> I think there's the. Um, you know, I would say. And don't say the the uh, snap crackle pop because they're children. No, I would say. So this band that I mentioned earlier, they had an album, and they talked. It's called Get Fruit Punch, Homie, and it was about how the Kool Aid Man's girlfriend was cheating on him with captain crunch it, that's my pick captain crunch. so i'm like i'll just fucking just you know i'll yeah i'll give it back yep captain crunch yep i mean he's a, he's a hot out. seafaring he guy yeah he's probably only this tall it doesn't matter he's hot okay now i'm never gonna look at captain crunch's <laughs> name all right guys i'm gonna play the song bye thank you again bye thank you Usually I sing something at the end, but I'm not going to. Oh, God, I gotta go pee. Bring.